Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to take you sort of behind the scenes of how I created my album, Sun. So if you haven't checked out my series, Making the Album, check that out first, because in there, I show you how I record every song. In this one, I'm going to take you into my computer, and I'll show you how I organized everything in Ableton Live, how I mixed and mastered the album, and also how I kind of planned it out in the beginning stages. Everything started off in the Voice Memos iPhone app. So every time I had a song idea, or humming a melody, or any kind of sketch, I would just record it into here. I just had a basically a folder with all the different memos and then I would just go through every single one and just listen to them and whenever something caught my attention, I would sort of rename it and give it a temporary name and some of them I put an asterisk at the beginning. So once then I had a short list, I would move those into a separate folder. So once I was ready to actually start writing the lyrics and the kind of chord progressions, I wanted to document everything. So I opened up a Google Doc. I have a table of contents at the top here. So for example, I can jump to the song Medicine and then I can see like which capo I was using, uh, what the chords are and then the lyrics. I had another spreadsheet open, uh, which gave me more of like a way for me to track my progress and status. Obviously at the left here, you have the list of songs and then the number of the song in the album. Then I had a simple rating system, which is just a way for me to kind of rate which songs I deem like the best in order for me to choose the order of the songs. Similarly, I had indicated the tempo here and what key they were in. And then I had this very loose metric of like happy and sad. So based on these four criteria, the rating, the tempo, the key, and the happy, sad, I was able to arrange the songs in the album so that there's a bit of a journey going on. So you're not getting all like high tempo songs or all low tempo or all happy next to each other. All these green columns at the right, I had this conditional formatting created here. So this had three different states. You can have unstarted, which turns it red, in progress, which makes it yellow and then done in green. So yeah, the columns were lyrics, so this is whether or not the lyrics were done. Then the second stage was recording, so every time I finished recording a song, I would mark it done. And then it went into the mixing stage and then mastering. The last two columns are regarding the YouTube videos for my uh, making the album series, so they're not that important in terms of making the album. All right, so here's an example of the Florence song. So this is what the project looked like in Ableton Live. The way I organize it is first I put these little markers at the top to indicate the different sections. And then in terms of the tracks, um, yeah, fairly self-explanatory. I kind of create tracks for the acoustic guitar, bass, piano. This depends on the song, obviously, whatever instruments I have. Here I have a combination of kind of MIDI instruments and some are just audio recordings. Uh, then vocals, I typically group things that are similar, like the vocals, the guitars together. Then once everything was done, what I typically do is I go and I solo each of the tracks and then I typically add an EQ with uh, cutting off the low end just to remove the mud. And then some of them I put a compressor. The bass here had an auto filter that was more for like the sound itself. Then what I typically do is I select all the tracks and I put all the volumes to zero. And that's how I start the mixing phase. And then I lower the volume on my interface and I listen on my two monitors here. Then I switch over to the session view here where I can see the mixer a little better. And I start bringing up the key parts first, like the rhythm section, the drums, the bass, and then the vocals and the guitar and stuff like that. Once I find that the levels are roughly in a good ballpark for those core instruments, then I start bringing in the like percussion, the synths and all that stuff at a fairly low volume first because I want to make sure I can hear the parts. And then once I feel like I have a decent mix across the board, then I would crank the volume up and listen on my monitors temporarily at a loud volume just to see what that sounds like. Once I'm happy with that mix, then I would mute my monitors and then listen on these headphones here and do a similar kind of thing, listen at low volumes, at high volumes, and just see if anything kind of sticks out drastically. All right, so I've opened up the song Dreaming, and as you can see, it's a very similar structure. Again, I have my labels delimiting all the different sections of the song, and then my vocals are all grouped together, bass, synth, and then the instruments I use are pretty much the same throughout the board electric guitar. In this case, I used a guitar rig plugin, as you can see here. My acoustic drums, I typically group them together. And then sometimes I would bring in like a, a drum plugin as well, which here I don't think Oh yes, I did. I brought up the 50s drum from Native Instruments just to kind of double up the sound a bit. 
What I did for mastering was I created a separate project in Ableton Live dedicated just to mastering this album. Uh, I'm not a mastering engineer by any means. Uh, this is sort of my like DIY mastering. So basically what I did is for every song, I created a new track. And then for each one, what I did was I loaded up this multi-effect rack uh, that comes with Ableton Live called Wide and Warm Master. And it's basically just a collection of an EQ, a compressor and a limiter. Every track is a clone of these effects here with obviously different settings depending on the song. So what I would do there is I would go up to the song here, I would import the mixes, and then I would just listen at a relatively kind of middle-ish volume. And then as the song is playing, I would jump to like the more busy parts and then just play around with the threshold of the compressor and then this uh, mid-side EQ here and then the limiter gain. And basically what I'm looking for is just a tiny bit of gain reduction in the kind of loudest parts of the song and a tiny bit of always above minus six. So I'm looking to roughly like minus three dB uh, for any kind of limiting or compression. And then here I basically just played by ear. If something feels like it needs to be a little crisper, I would boost the highs here. What I did with the gain here is that as you can see, sometimes the waveforms are super low across the board. So what I did here was I basically look at this waveform and I use the clip property gain to boost it up until I see that nothing is clipping, but everything is kind of maximally loud. And then I would just reset this back. I would remember the number, reset it, and then add a utility and enter that number here. The reason I did this was that Sometimes I had to do revisions of mixes and I wanted to be able to bring a waveform back into here without necessarily having to go back and change the clip properties. So then for each one, I would export songs individually as the final masters. And a shortcut to do that in Ableton Live is if you select a clip and press Command L or Control L, it loops the clip, but it also set, selects the range for that clip. So then you can quickly export just that song. So once I was done with those masters, I would put them on my iPhone and then go listen in the car and listen on headphones. And I would also do secondar secondary listens on the computer too with closing my eyes, like without looking at a DAW. I would also reference my tracks with other tracks that are kind of similar. So I would open Spotify and Ableton next to each other. So I would kind of mute one and then listen to a song and make sure that roughly it sounds similar-ish in terms of volume and clarity. And then what I did was I created this quick little spreadsheet in Google here. I would listen through all the songs and then whenever I noticed something was like too loud or like weirdly mixed or unclear, I would write down kind of quick notes here. So then I went back and kind of made some final adjustments and then re-exported. The final pieces, I guess, were creating the album art. So I just used Affinity Designer. Uh, if you're not familiar, Affinity just makes products very similar to Adobe's suite. So they have an equivalent of Illustrator and Photoshop, but you don't have to pay monthly. The album might look different than what I'm showing you here. I'm recording this video a bit before I actually finalize the release of the album. But what I'm gonna do is then use DistroKid to distribute the album. Uh, so DistroKid will upload to Spotify, iTunes, Google, YouTube, etc. basically every service except Bandcamp. So I'm also gonna put the album on Bandcamp. If you have DistroKid, you just log in here, you pick how many songs you want and then input everything hand by hand. If you guys are interested, I'll put a link to a referral code in the description. So if you want to sign up and get 7% off, use that code. Uh, that link will help me out because I get a little cut from that as well. But this is not sponsored or anything. So you don't have to use DistroKid, but I've been using it personally and I find it super convenient for getting music out there. Hopefully you picked up a thing or two. As you can see, I'm not using anything fancy. Uh, so you can pretty much release an album on your own these days. You don't need to go through any fancy services. Effectively, you can do everything from your bedroom, which is kind of what I'm doing. So yeah, hopefully this was interesting. Thanks so much for watching. Again, make sure to check out my series, Making the Album, where in every episode I showed you how I record the song like with all the instruments. And definitely check out the album. I would love it so much if you gave it a listen. Um, super proud of it. It's called Sun and my artist name is Coat Seller. So you can check me out on Spotify, Bandcamp and iTunes or wherever you listen to music. But I'll put all the links in the description. So check there first. Yeah, thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.